So previously we talked about Ed Jean, and one person that was linked to Ed Jean was the disappearance of Evelyn Hartley, who to this day is still missing. She went missing on October 24th, 1953. She was 14 years old. She has been missing for 68 years to this day, October 24th. So just a little bit about her, just to raise a little bit of awareness, and maybe hopes that somebody can still find her. On October 24th, 1953, Vigo... Ross Moosen, a professor at La Crosse State College, now University of Wisconsin-La Crosse, hired Evelyn Hartley, the daughter of a fellow professor, to take care of his 20-month-old daughter. That evening, Evelyn's father, Richard, called the Ross Moosen household several times after she failed to check in as planned at 8.30 p.m. He received no answer. Concerned, he drove to the Rasmussen house. When Richard arrived, the doors were locked, the lights and radio were on, and items were scattered all over the house. The living room furniture had been moved around to different locations, as were Evelyn's school books. Richard found her shoes in different rooms, one shoe upstairs and one shoe downstairs. He also found his daughter's broken glasses upstairs. Richard did not find Evelyn in the house. Richard also found every room in the house locked except for one in the basement that was located at the back of the house. An open window there was missing a screen and the screen was found leaning against an outside wall. He also found a short step ladder belonging to the homeowner positioned at the open window. Pry marks were found on some of the windows and footprints had been found in the areas of the house. Blood was found both inside the house and in the yard with bloody handprints about 100 feet away in a garage in a nearby house. The child Evelyn had been caring for was found asleep and unharmed. So, one thing I just want to say, pry marks, because Ed Jean was infamously known for using a pry bar. Yeah. Like, that's how he got his caskets open. Police believe someone took Evelyn through the yard, but dropped her on the ground before carrying her further. The police used dogs to pick up her scent trail, which ended at Coley Drive, two blocks away. Police thought Evelyn was most likely put into a vehicle there and driven away. They were told by one neighbor they had seen a car repeatedly drive around the neighborhood and another person who lived nearby claimed they heard screams an hour earlier. The witness thought it was just children playing. Two days after the incident, local resident Ed Hoffer told police that while driving his vehicle, he was almost hit by a Buick as it was speeding in a westerly direction. Inside the Buick, Hoffer reported seeing one man was driving the vehicle while a second man was in the back seat with a girl. Several days later, various items of clothing, many of which were stained with blood, were found at different locations. Blood found on the jacket matched Evelyn's blood type. Over 1,000 members of the local community, including law enforcement, the National Guard, Boy Scouts, and a lacrosse state college students and faculty participated in a search in October 1953. The Civil Air Patrol and the U.S. Air Force were also used in the search. A vehicle inspection program were also undertaken with the intent of searching every vehicle in La Crosse County. Gas station attendants were also asked to check cars for bloodstains. Recent graves were reopened to determine if Evelyn's remains were placed with one with a recent burial. In May 1954, mass lie detector tests were conducted on La Crosse area high school boys in an attempt to find more information about Evelyn's disappearance. Though the local authorities had planned to test 1,750 students and faculty, the testing was controversial and was halted after around 300 were tested. After his arrest, murderer Edward Jean was considered a suspect in Evelyn's disappearance as he was visiting a relative a few blocks away from the Rasmussen house at the time. However, Ed Jean denied involvement in the disappearance and passed two lie detector tests. Police found no trace of Evelyn's remains during a search in Ed Jean's Plainfield property. In November 1957, authorities announced that Jean had been cleared of any connection with the disappearances of both Evelyn and Georgia Weckler, an eight-year-old who disappeared in 1947. Despite this, some still considered Jean a suspect. Evelyn's kidnapping led to one of the biggest searches in the history of Wisconsin. Public efforts to find her have included the Charlie Project and the Saudi Daisy Roots Project. A reward fund established in the immediate aftermath of the event reached $6,600, equivalent to $64,000 in 2020. Her parents moved to Portland, Oregon in the 1970s and are now both deceased. In 2004, a man named Mel Williams came forward with a conversation he recorded earlier at a bar. Although his goal was to record a band which was performing, the conversation between two men was unintentionally recorded as well. On the tape, one of the men, Clyde 
Tywee Peterson implicated himself, Jack Golfair, and an unnamed third party in a disappearance claiming that Evelyn was murdered and buried in Lafarge, Wisconsin after her kidnapping. Golfair and the unnamed party are now deceased. Although authorities promised to investigate the lead, no further developments were ever made. In 2016, her case was profiled on an episode of The Vanished. To be honest, I, I don't know. I feel like Evelyn was still taken by Ed Gene. Just there's not very much evidence to go off of. But what is the chances of him being in the exact same area visiting a family member and somebody disappears? Granted, she was 14, but he did take volves from young women. He could have easily put her body in many of the, one of the graves that he dug up, switched them out, just not told police that he dug up that grave. Maybe. 68 years later to this day. Evelyn Hartley was born February 21st, 1937. She disappeared at the age of 14 and she would be 84 years old to this day. That is it for today's Crime Talk. All the information will be listed down below.